Hello, good morning everybody. Welcome to Kapitira. Welcome. Uh, it's, a, it's a Thursday today. Uh, today we are studying the word of the Lord. I hope you have your coffee with you. It's hot and I pray that you're good to go. We are going to study the word of the Lord. But before we do that, let's join our hearts in prayer. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this brand new day that you have given us. Thank you for the new mercies that are ready for us this morning. Lord, you are a faithful God. You never change. But Lord, we know in our lives, Lord, that um, we're really far from being faithful just like you are. Lord, we commit to you this time, Lord. Would you teach us how to be faithful? Lord, show us your heart. And show us, Lord, your compassion towards us, Lord. And Lord, I pray that we would be captivated by you this morning. So we commit to you, Lord, our minds, our affections, and our wills. Would you take them captive, Lord? Holy Spirit, would you point us to Jesus? We long to hear from him and to be changed by him. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hey, if you have your Bibles be, uh, with you, um, may I invite you to turn to Revelation chapter 2. We'll, we'll be reading the last line of verse 10. Okay, Revelation uh, chapter 2 and the last line of verse 10. This is what it says. Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. So this week we're devoting our study to the Church of Smyrna and uh, past few days we've seen what they're going through in their life. They're really suffering and the challenge of the Lord to them is to be faithful even unto death and out of that faithfulness there's a crown of life that is waiting for them. Hey, today I want to introduce you to, to this person, or this gentleman. Hope you have your coffee with you. His name is Polycarp, and he was the bishop of Smyrna. He was the pastor of the church in Smyrna for a, for a, for some time, no? In fact, a long time. This gentleman is very interesting. He lived uh, from 69 AD to 156 AD, and that's very significant. You know why? Because uh, if you look at the dating here, during the time of uh, the writing of um, in the book of Revelation. Polycarp would have been somewhere in his mid 20s to his early 30s. So, so, so a lot of us are are on those age range, no? Gusto pa sa mali. <laughs> Late 20s to early to early 30s, and and that's that's Polycarp when uh, when this gas, when when this letter was being um, uh, written. That was his age. And let me tell you something about Polycarp. You know, Polycarp had been a Christian since he was a child. So, luck in church. Uh, but the Romans didn't get around to killing him until he was in his 80s. Whatever the reason for the delay, it was it is still the first recorded martyrdom in the post-New Testament church history. He lived during the most formative era of the church at the end of the age of the original apostles when the church was making critical transition to the second generation of believers. Tradition has it that he was personally discipled by the apostle John and that he was appointed as Bishop of Smyrna in, in modern Izmir, Turkey by some of the original apostles. In his latter years, in his later years, he tried to settle disputes about the date to celebrate Easter, and he confronted one of the church's most troublesome heretics, the Gnostic Marcion, calling him the firstborn of Satan when he ran into him in Rome. Polycarp was also responsible for converting many from Gnosticism. His only existing writing, a pastoral letter to the church at Philippi, shows that he had little formal education and was unpretentious humble and direct very simple man si polycarp is not really grandiose but he was really instrumental sabi dito di ba uh, he was um, he, he was installed as bishop of smyrna in in most probably some of the original apostles were present when he was installed there i believe john included um, so polycarp was a pastor in the church of smyrna and he is about around 86 years old when the Romans decided to kill him. Medyo late na sila to the action. He <laughs> spent his whole life uh, 
serving the Lord and now in his twilight years 80 something 86 years old uh, he was um, sentenced to die sabi um, kasi ano nangyari si Polycarp um, remember he's already an old man and there's these rumors that that the Roman um, authorities were out to get him. So some of his disciples urged him to go into hiding. He didn't really want to go into hiding, but he he just uh, heard out this uh, request from his friends, and he did went to hiding. And in hiding, he he dreamt a dream. No, and in his dream, uh, the pillow that he was lying on caught fire and it was burning. Uh, the next day, he went to his disciples and he said, You know what? I think the Lord just told me through a dream that, that I I would be burnt at the stake. Sure enough, later on, the, the police, the authorities did find him. And they came knocking at his door. So he probably knew that that is the time already. And uh, the story goes on to say, In one of the most touching instances of Christian grace imaginable, Polycarp welcomed his captors as if they were friends, talked with them and ordered that food and drink be served to them. Then Polycarp made one request, one hour to pray before they took him away. The officers overhearing his prayers that went on for two hours began to have second thoughts. What were they doing arresting an old man like this? So what a tremendous act of grace, no? So matotok hang na siya, no? The police were already knocking at his door. He knows that um, these people are out to get him. And instead of, number one, going to hiding again or escaping, he had food ordered and brought to these um, captors and he served them and welcomed them as guests. Only had one request, give him an hour to pray. And so they obliged. Remember, 86 years old, no? Old man asking to pray and so these officers obliged him and and Polycarp went to pray and his prayer was so powerful it lasted for two hours and probably the officers was overhearing his prayers and he, they said to him ano bang ginagawa natin? Uh, why are we even out to get this man you know, 86 years old but they had to do their job and that uh, Polycarp was brought before the proconsul to be tried let me read to you an excerpt from his story no this conversation between Polycarp and the proconsul. Sabe, the proconsul pressured him to deny Christ and to swear by Caesar. Remember, Caesar wanted to to be worshipped, no Dominus um, uh, et Deus, no as Lord and God. And so, Polycarp refused. Polycarp said, "For eighty six years, I have been his servant, and he has never done me wrong. How can I blaspheme my King who saved me?" Swear by Caesar's fortune, the proconsul shouted. He was really annoyed. If you imagine that I will swear by Caesar's fortune, as you put it, pretending not to know who I am, I will tell you plainly I am a Christian. So Polycarp is saying, no need to, you know, to, to trick me or to find evidences whether I'm a Christian or not. I'm just going to tell you bluntly I'm a Christian. The proconsul threatened him, I have wild beasts, I shall throw you to them if you, do, if you don't change your attitude. Polycarp said, call them. If you make light of wild beasts, I've been proconsul, I'll have you destroyed by fire. Listen to what Polycarp said. The fire you threaten burns for a time and is soon extinguished. There is a fire you know nothing about, the fire of the judgment to come and of eternal punishment, the fire reserved for the ungodly. But why do you hesitate? Do what you want. The proconsul said, Polycarp has confessed that he is a Christian. He announced that to the crowd. This fellow is the teacher of Asia, the father of Christians, the destroyer of our gods, who teaches numbers of people not to sacrifice or even worship. Polycarp was called an atheist because he rejected the whole pantheon of Rome. And so Polycarp was sentenced to die by burning at the stake, just like his dream. Interestingly, you know, so the soldiers grabbed him to nail him to a stake, but Polycarp start, stopped them. This is what he said, Leave me as I am, for he who grants me to endure the fire will enable me also to remain on the fire unmoved without the security you desire from nails. He prayed aloud, the fire was lit, and his flesh was consumed. The chronicle of this martyrdom said it was not as burning flesh, but as baking, as bread baking, or as gold and silver refined in a furnace. Uh, 
So tradition has it, no, that that Polycarp, when he was burned, that that the wind just passed through, and the fire formed a canopy around him. So much so that as he was there by the fire, the smell was not like burning flesh, but more like a baking bread. You know, every morning I I smell that. No, we heat up our pandesal, and the smell of the bread just that perks up your day. And that was the smell of Polycarp, and uh, tradition has it that he didn't die from the from the fire at the stake, so that soldiers have to come in and pierce him and kill him that way. But notice what Polycarp says: "No, leave me as I am, for he who grants me to endure the fire will enable me also to remain on the pyre unmoved without the security you desire from the nails." Sabi niya, "Wag na akong ipako, you know, hindi ako aalis dito." What a, what a picture of faithfulness, no? And and that is Jesus' admonition to the church of Smyrna. Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. I'm imagining Polycarp, a young professional, no reading this. And he's saying, you know, and the Lord is saying to them, you know, you will suffer a lot of things. Your whole church will suffer a lot of things. But my call towards you is to persevere and to be faithful to the Lord. How is your faithfulness to the Lord? You know, the Lord is really faithful to us. Um, his faithfulness, His mercies never end. They are new every morning. Great is His faithfulness. But He's always faithful to us. But then we have to ask our, ourselves the question, Are we faithful to God? Does the Lord find us faithful? So there are various things that you can think about in the life of um, Polycarp no, as, as uh, it relates to faithfulness of the Lord. Number one is graciousness. One way to check your faithfulness to the Lord is through your graciousness to other people. Rabbi ni Jesus, Luke 6, 32-36 If you love those who love you, what benefit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who do good to you, what benefit is that to you? Even sinners do the same. And if you lend to those who, from whom you expect to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to get back the same amount. But love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. And your reward will be great and you will be called and you will be sons of the Most High for He is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. Be merciful even as your Father is merciful. Polycarp was like that, diba? Right? When his captor came, he served them a meal. He prayed for them even. How is your graciousness? You know, sometimes people get really annoying, specifically people like this who's just out to get you and persecute you. You know, credit that to Jesus na lang. Look at the cross of Jesus and from the grace that you receive from the cross, from the mercy that you receive from the Father in heaven, translate that to graciousness to other people. And secondly, you know, our faithfulness to the Lord should also produce gratefulness in us. Remember Job, he suffered a lot, diba? Right? Uh, Job 1, 20-21 says, Then Job arose and tore his robe after he heard that everything in his life was just taken away from him. He shaved his head and fell on the ground and worshipped. He was really um, hurt by what had happened. And he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Again, no, he was talking to his wife. Then his wife said to him, do, do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, You speak as one who of the foolish women would speak. Shall we receive good from God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. Job learned to worship the Lord and be grateful to the Lord, not, for, not just for the good stuff he receives, but also for difficult parts. Because all of that, you know, the Lord is faithful to him. Polycarp said, though, that, that really touched me, no? When he was admonished to recant his faith and just to, to uh, worship Caesar, he said, For 86 years I have been Jesus' servant and he has never done me wrong. How can I blaspheme my king who saved me? You know, when, whenever you forget, you know, the graciousness of the Lord towards you, and whenever you forget to be grateful towards the Lord, then it's easy to deny him. It's easy to deny the Lord with an ungrateful heart. But if you are grateful to the Lord and you just know how the Lord had blessed you, just like Job, just like Polycarp, it's going to be really difficult to deny the Lord. It's going to be easier to remain faithful to Him. So recall all the good things and even the blessings that the Lord had given you and be grateful to the Lord. And finally, have a gospel-mindedness. 
Uh, si Polycarp, ganun, no? So, while he was being burned at the stake, he was admonishing, no? There's a fire that burns hotter than this, the fire of God's judgment. So, parang be reconciled to God. Ganun, ganun, no? Parang he was sharing the gospel. Paul says, no, only let your ma- manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel. You know, let's be intentional because even our suffering, even our suffering can be um, a deposit of gospel to other people. Sabi nga nung uh, isang church father, the blood of the martyr is the seed for the gospel. You know, we're planting seed. Uh, it's very important to live intentional lives. That, that, that the life that we live would just magnify you know, the beauty of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our, how is your faithfulness to the Lord? Now, remember those three things. I challenge you these three things today. Exercise graciousness. No? Credit nyo na lang sa Lord. Whatever offense that you receive, just credit that to the Lord and be gracious to other people. Be grateful to the Lord. Not just the good stuff, but also the difficult parts. Just be grateful to the Lord. It's so hard to deny the Lord with a grateful heart. It's so easy to be unfaithful to the Lord with an ungrateful heart. And finally, have gospel-mindedness. Be intentional in how you could live out your life today so much so that people would be attracted to the gospel. I hope that this story touches your heart and blesses you. We are going through a pandemic right now, various trials, but just like Polycarp, no, pwede pala na we can suffer and the aroma of our suffering is like the baking of bread, no? It's pleasant aroma before the Lord. And I hope that this would challenge us to do that. Let's join our hearts in prayer. Father, we thank you for our study of your word today. Lord, we thank you. Uh, because you are present with us just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in that fiery furnace, you were with them. Just like uh, Polycarp, Lord, you were with him. And so, Lord, help us to be gracious towards other people even though they're hurting us. Help us to be always grateful to you for the way that you have seen us through. Lord, and also have to have a gospel-mindedness and being intentional in everything that we do that it would magnify your grace in our lives. And draw people towards you we love you lord we commit to you our day in jesus name we pray amen guys i hope your coffee is still hot i'll see you again tomorrow god bless you bye